you've been following my channel, you know that recently I purchased a Bride of Frankenstein to go with my Monsters collection. You know, and, and as I was putting together some displays and just kind of having fun with them, I noticed there was something, or I should say, someone that I was missing, and that was Dr. Frankenstein. So what I did was I went online to try to find a head sculpt which kind of uh, resembled the Dr. Frankenstein of the 1930s, that Colin Clive uh, look. And the closest I could find was something from Dr. Mego. It was a Super Joe head. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and paint that and see how close to Dr. Frankenstein I can get. Well, I've gathered some materials here that I'm gonna be using to paint my, my custom uh, Dr. Frankenstein sculpt. I have uh, some matte clear enamel that I'm gonna use to finish the project. This kind of like seals your paint job and kind of protects it. I think it's a pretty necessary step. Uh, I got a couple of shades here. Um, this one right here is the Agrax Earth Shade. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dilute that and I'm gonna use it to create some, some worry lines in Dr. Frankenstein's face. And uh, also, I have some um, Nullins Oil Gloss. Now, this right here is gonna be used as a, an effect on his hair to give it a, a kind of oily sheen. And then I have a, a dark black. Uh, I have a D&D Abysmal Black here, but you know, just, just a dark black will do. Um, I'm going to use this to, to paint his head and uh, pupils of his eyes. And then I have some flesh tone here. This again is another d, &D paint. Um, it's just a, a, a light flesh tone and I'm going to use that for his lips. For the eyes, I have uh, just a, a basic white that I got from Walmart and a Kelly Green. Some of the pictures I saw online uh, had um, Colin Clive with, with dark green eyes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to replicate that. I also picked up some paint brushes while I was at Walmart. You want some with a very fine tip. You know, I'm going to be using these uh, on the end here as um, as the paint brushes for the for the eyes that uh, that I'm going to paint. You know, because you got to get the pupils and stuff, so you really need something with a fine point. So those are the materials that we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and get started. As always, we're going to start with um, a little bit of soapy water to remove some of the oils that are used in the the casting process for our miniature. Just uh, make sure that your head is nice and clean and that you're removing the oils from all areas of the uh, of the head so that you know uh, it's just when, I think when they're casted they have a, a, a process that uh, allows them to be released and that process probably involves some sort of like lubricant. So what I'm doing is I'm just removing that right now from the model and I'm going to go ahead and rinse them off. Here I am working on the eyes. I'm just trying to get the whites in. And remember, if you if you make a mistake, you can go back with your brush and, and correct them. Like, see, ooh, that was a bad one. So let me go back up there and clean that off. Okay, I've got it. You may want to use some um, of your soapy water to get the paint to flow evenly and smoothly. But again, don't use too much because um, what it'll do is it'll it'll begin to run. So just just enough to bring the consistency to um, a smooth running paint should be good enough. I think that's probably where I need to. Hmm, now I gotta get that corner. Okay, I think that's where I need to stop. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and let those dry and then I'm gonna add the green. Um, I was looking up some pictures online and um, Colin Clive had, had green eyes in, in a couple of color photos that I saw. I don't know if they'd been colorized or if it was really his natural color, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go for a green, maybe a, a hazel. I might put a little brown in there as well, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy dry before I go on to the next step. I just went ahead and I used the, the green paint straight out of the bottle. It seems like a pretty decent color. I'm, going to try it and see how it works out. Remember when you're painting the um, 
the eyes, make sure that you put a dot towards the center of the eye and then color up to the lid. And remember, if you over travel, you can always go back and you can you can fix it. Okay, I've got the green eyes in. I think uh, and my next step, I'm gonna let them dry and I'm gonna add a, a black pupil. Oops, looks like I might have gotten too much on there. Let me see if I can round it off. Hmm. Now I'm gonna have to fix the other eye. Yeah, you gotta make sure that you balance them, right? You don't want one eye bigger than another. It does require a steady hand, doesn't it? Mm, I think that's good. I'm going to let those dry and then I'm going to go on to the next step, adding the pupil. Now that it's dried, I'm going to use my smallish brush to just put a dot of black. I'm going to try to get it towards the center and the upper part of the eye. Because I think that'll bring down the green color a little bit too. Now this part takes a very steady hand. I can't seem to get that one. I noticed the brush I'm using has a little bit of a hook on it, but it's the smallest one I have available, so... Mm, I don't know, what do you think? Hmm. I'll take a look at it a little closer off camera and see if I want to proceed from there. But adding those black pupils, it got a little darker than I wanted, so I decided to kind of soften those with a little dot of white paint for, for each eye. So I think I am good to go with the eyes. I'm gonna start painting the hair, the lips, and the eyebrows. I decided to start with the eyebrows first because if I mess up, I can go back and I can, I can take care of it. When painting the eyebrows, it's uh, important to kind of like um, trace out what you want first very carefully, and then you can go back and you can fill in the color. Mm, I think that's, I think that's good. If I need to, I can go ahead and fill those in later. Now I'm going to do the hair, and you guys know uh, when I paint hair, I always try to make it look um, natural by following the scalp line. You know, in every picture that I found, he has like what appears to be like strands of hair just going in all sorts of different directions. So I'm going to try to maintain that. And his hair was very, very um, slick. So uh, I'm going to get some of that, um, that Nolan's oil that's um, glossy that I used for my Aliens video. And I'm going to use that to kind of um, paint his hair. Remember, you're working uh, with the scalp. You know, you probably, you know, the, the hair color on this guy is pretty dark, so you're probably gonna have some of the scalp showing through. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that, and then I'm gonna probably paint the rest off camera. Well, um, a good majority of it anyway. But you can see you're just following the scalp line. All right. Don't want him to look bald, so I'm going to fill that in. And then I'm going to gradually 
taper it off towards the rear. There, I think that's working. I don't know, painting the hair is the most uh, tedious part for me, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, it's just a lot to cover, I guess. I'm just trying to find uh, the areas of the scalp that are defined by the sculpt of the piece and just paint uh, those and pretty much nothing else. You know, to clean this up, if you make a mistake since it's black, it will be a little bit more difficult than, say, the, the Taylor figure that we worked on last time. You know, you probably have to get the brush on the areas that you over travel on. Let me get a little more of this black. I need to thin it out a little bit, I think. I'm going towards the base. You can see how that technique kind of... Uh, individualizes the strands so that you just don't have uh, a straight line running across you know um, yeah I mean it I wouldn't say that that's a bad thing it's just uh, the look that I'm trying to go for is a little bit more natural I know Migo um, they just you know the the back of the neck and and where the the hair meets the scalp is pretty much a straight line so I mean you know don't worry about it it's just what you want to do and what you're capable of, you know. Um, <laughs> as I get older, today I'm having my birthday, I'm going to be 57, right? As I get older, I notice that uh, painting miniatures and sculpted heads is not as easy as it once was, you know. Um, I can't see very well anymore and my hand's not as steady as it used to be, you know. <laughs> so, you know, just do what you can. But, you know, remember, it's just a toy. You're just having fun with it. It's not like, you know, the end of the world. If you make a mistake, you can always just dip it into um, <laughs> your, your soapy water and go again. And I'm just using a lot of this black. I don't want to put too much on my palette. Um, I'm not using a wet palette. I'm just using a plastic palette, you know. Um, some people are, are a little bit more advanced, and they want to use a wet palette to keep the paint uh, from drying up on the... Um, on the palette itself and that's a really good idea um, you know um, I, I saw this video on how to make one you can get some parchment paper and wet it and keep it in like a you know a, a sandwich box that you get at Walmart and you can use that as a wet palette I have one of those but um, I don't know I don't use enough paint I think to really justify the use of it or maybe I'm just using it incorrectly. I don't know. Hmm. Looks like I'm getting some good coverage now. But just just have fun with it. It's you know, it's your miniature. You're gonna live with it. I was watching a, a video the other day of a of a guy who um, was customizing a um, a Deadpool. No, it wasn't Deadpool. It was uh, Deathstroke. And, um, you know, he just, he was just uh, painting uh, the head and he just put a little tape on it and spray painted it across and it looked great. You know, so, you know, just remember that these are toys and they're meant to be fun and not a pain, you know. If, if it becomes something that, that's uh, not enjoyable, you might want to reconsider doing something else. Let's see, I followed that down this way, so let me try to... Keep the sideburns the same. Hmm, what do you think? Calling Clive? 
me see if I missed any of the hair. I think I missed one here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a picture and see how I'm doing on this, and I'll be right back. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think it looks like Dr. Frankenstein? I'm going to go ahead and add the, um, the Nolan's oil gloss uh, on his hair, and uh, that should make it kind of slick looking. You know, in the video, I mean, I'm sorry. In the movie Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, you know, he had that slick back hair. It was all glossy. I guess they used to put oil on it in the old days. So let me just go ahead and add some of this. Now, the only effect I think it's going to provide for this is to, um, is to give it that glossy sheen. It doesn't pick up any light, you know, but this one, this one will reflect some of it. So I'm hoping that it provides a different effect. Again, I'm just kind of following the scalp like I did before when I was painting it. I want it shiny on certain areas, you know. Maybe I'll just get the whole head. Definitely on the top and in the front. You know, shades are, are really cool. I mean, uh, you know, when I was younger, I used to paint miniatures uh, for D&D &D and stuff. And, you know, shades and inks were you know, something new to me back then. And, you know, I'm, I'm still learning about shades and inks. I mean, I'm not an expert. <laughs> you guys can see that, right? But, you know, I just, I just like to have fun with it. And so uh, using those can kind of help provide you with some different techniques that are pretty easy to use, honestly. Uh, they don't really cost all that much, you know. You can get a couple of them, like uh, the black for sure. And the Agrax Earth Shade, and that can cover pretty much everything you need. I do have some flesh ones, but um, I don't, I'm not going to use that on these miniatures because I, you know I want to keep them meagle looking too. I don't want to have a super realistic face. So now I'm going to paint the lips. Let me go ahead and get a little soapy water on there so that it flows well. Get some rid of some of the excess, and on the lips you're just kind of defining them to show that they're there and you use, use just a shade that's a little bit darker than than the sculpt itself because you know you don't want it to look like lipstick you just want it to look um, you know like natural lips I was also watching another video um, of Amigo Enthusiast who had somebody paint a uh, Captain Kirk uh, miniature form. I mean, a uh, uh, Captain Kirk Mego form, and uh, just by painting the lips, it made a big difference on the on the figure. You know, so I, I think this is a step that you can't like overlook when you're doing your own sculpts, uh, painting your own um, custom heads. Don't forget that. You see, it really does wonders for the for the sculpt. All right, at this point. I think I am going to um, get him dressed and see how he looks in, in full getup. Well, here's the final product. You can see how the Agrax Earthshade uh, really gave him those uh, worry lines that he needed, uh, you know, that were indicative in the film. 
And uh, here's the outfit that I've chosen for him. I believe it's a dentist outfit. I, I got it off of Dr. Migo's site. And uh, the classic TV toys had these gloves. Um, I got some for my police uh, model too because I created a, a custom uh, riot policeman for my uh, Planet of the Apes Conquest uh, collection. And so um, I had these, I, I got an extra set because I was thinking about making two uh, policemen, but I'm gonna use them for Dr. Frankenstein. There's a picture that I found online where he has these rubber gloves and he's kind of like lost in thought, and, you know, contemplating what he's doing, I guess. And so um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with him. He looks good. You know, um, the, the head that I used was from Dr. Migo and it was a Super Joe head, you know, but there are some other heads out there that maybe, you know, you might want to try. I think maybe a thinner face would have been nice, but you know, this is this is pretty much all I had and that's that's what I was looking for, is something that would, you know, represent uh, Dr. Frankenstein. Well, there's my Dr. Frankenstein rounded out with the Bride of Frankenstein and my Frankenstein's monster. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try to uh, customize your Omigo figures. You know, there's a lot of possibilities out there with, with all the head sculpts that are available and all the outfits. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to go out there and try something new and create something that uh, is just going to be uh, an addition to your collection that uh, you can treasure. Uh, again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you all soon. Take care now.